I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Um, I'd like to welcome all the members and staff. Um, we'd like to um, adopt, is there an adoption of the agenda? I'll is there a motion? motion to move the yes. adopt the agenda. Second. So move. Okay. The agenda has been <coughs> approved. Let's take a vote. Oh, let's take a vote. I'm sorry. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. Has been approved. Um, has everyone checked the minutes? We have, is there a motion to adopt? A minutes? motion to adopt the minutes. Second. I'll second it. A vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And before Dr. Withers, let's, let's let Miss um, Councilwoman Washington, whose birthday is today, let her make a presentation here. Oh, okay. <coughs> Good evening for our listening audience. Um, tonight, I would like to um, present two of our members with the City of Jacksonville pen for their dedications and services to the City of Jacksonville and to the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. So if I could have Mrs. Willie Saunders and Ms. Suzanne Nelson to come forward, please. <laughs> On behalf of the Jacksonville City Council, we thank you for your service and dedication to our city. Thank you. On behalf of the City Council, we, de um, excuse me, we appreciate your dedication to the city and your services. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> attendance report if everyone could look at the attendance report to make sure it's accurate if not let us know of any changes I'd like to introduce Dr. Richard Woodruff. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to be with you all. Y'all are doing some great work for the city. Tonight, I'd like to spend a minute talking to you about the ethics policy which the city council adopted in November. Recently, it came to our attention through some of the grants and also contracts we signed with the state of North Carolina Highway Department and with the federal government for various issues including our Community Development Block Grant Program, that there was a requirement relative to having an ethics policy. We looked back, we had basically assumed that the city had an ethics policy, and we found that yes, we did, but the reality was it only applied to the mayor and six city council members. In order to comply and continue to receive funding from the various state and federal agencies, we were required to amend that policy so that it covers everyone. It covers, therefore, all of the management, all 550 employees of the city, and it goes so far as to cover all advisory persons and any person that we hire as an agent. So, for example, when the city hires a consultant, they have to live by that. When the city hires an outside attorney to assist us, they have to live by that. <coughs> We're also required to document that we have presented this ethics program and we have explained it to you so that should a question come up in the future in an audit from the federal or state government that we can pull out a form that says, you know, here's the proof. So what we'd like to do, my understanding is that in your agenda packet you have a full copy of the ethics and it's on page 10. The first thing I'd like to do is explain uh, the word canon. The city council adopted the original ethics policy uh, many years ago, and based upon the structure of the English church, it used the rules of the English church, and it called each of the rules canons. Canons 1 through 7 apply only to the mayor and council. 
They do not apply to you. In amending this, we have added canons 8 and canon 9. Those are the two canons that apply to all of us, including you and your advisory service. I will not read it to you, but I would like to point out, first of all, the purpose. And I will read that part. The ethics policy is established to ensure that the city of Jacksonville and its management, employees, elected officials, advisory committee members, and or agents conduct the business of city government in a fair, just, and open fashion, and to ensure that all parties seeking to conduct business with the city are on a level playing field and have an equal chance to conduct business with the city. This policy does not restrict the city from utilizing procedures to pre-qualify bidders, nor to restrict participation by businesses based upon former work performance on city projects or projects conducted by other governmental units. It applies, of course, to all of us. I would like to point out Section C, Acceptance of Gifts. Persons covered by this ethics policy may neither solicit nor accept gratuities, favors, or anything of monetary value from any present or potential third-party contractor at any tier, any subrecipient at any tier, or agent thereof, <coughs> or lease leasee. This prohibition does not apply to any gift of less than $50 total value given to the city as a gift to the entire work unit or department, such as a gift of Christmas cookies or donuts to the police department. <laughs> <laughs> this prohibition does not include honorariums, donations to the city government as a corporate body, pledges or donations for the construction of community projects or the operation of a city-operated conducted event, grants, and similar donations when determined by the city attorney to be for the benefit of the city as a corporate body. Obviously, what that says is this. Let's say for discussion purposes that a local nursery comes to you as an advisory group and they say, we really appreciate what y'all are doing to beautify our community. And we would like to donate five trees for you to plant anywhere. You can accept those because they're given to the community. They're given to the corporate body. On the other hand, that same nursery could not come to me as an individual and say, your yard looks terrible, and to beautify it, I want to give you these five trees to have your wife plant in your front yard to make it more beautiful. Well, that may be a good cause for my front yard, and I'm sure my wife would be happy to plant them. We could not accept them because it's a personal gift. Another good example is it's Christmas time. In City Hall, over the next month, we will have many people who will drop by a canister of cookies. As long as they're not given to an individual, but they're given to the building department as a unit, or they're given to the street department in thanks, or what you did to the sanitation and for the sanitation employees recently. You hosted a breakfast. You can still do that. Because you're not giving a breakfast to one individual. You're giving the breakfast to the work unit to show your appreciation for what they do. So that, I hope that clarifies the prohibition. The other point, conflict of interest. No person covered by this ethics policy may create, this is paragraph D, conflict of interest. No person covered by this ethics policy may create a conflict of interest. A conflict of interest would arise when a person covered by this code, including any member of his or her immediate family, partner, or organization that employs or intends to employ any of the parties listed herein, has a financial interest in the firm selected for award. However, no conflict will exist where the said party is simply an employee of the firm conducting business with the city. Let's discuss that just a moment. If I have a brother, which I do, and he is in the landscape business, which he isn't, but if he were in the landscape business and he came to the city to be part of a bid package and I'm a person who is reviewing those bids, that creates conflict. On the other hand, if you are 
members of the Environmental Advisory Committee, and you have someone who is in the landscape business or any business which services the city, it's not a conflict for you for them to do business with the city because you're not involved in determining who gets the bids or the service delivered to the city. I would say to you, I don't believe that any of you will ever find yourself in a position where you will have to worry about this conflict or this ethics policy. And I believe that for two reasons. I've been here long enough to know every one of you. You're honest, ethical people. Everything you do, and I mean this seriously, everything you do, you do for this community. None of you do it for self-gratification. So the first reason why I don't believe there'll ever be a problem with this is because I know you as individuals. The second thing is because of the nature of what you do, you are always giving excellent advice and recommendations to the council. That alone means that you are really not in a position to make a final decision, although we do value your recommendations and advice. Over the next uh, several days, as you have um, time, I would encourage you to read all of this. This evening, we are going to ask you to sign a document, which Carla will pass around, that recognizes for our public <coughs> record that this has been reviewed with you, that you acknowledge that it applies to you. Do you have any questions regarding this document? Me selling gasoline to the city doesn't make There's no much. conflict at all, and the reason why, and first of all, I appreciate the fact you're disclosing that, the fact that you compete for bids with the city, your company, the fact that you do not have any control over who gets that bid, that means there is no conflict. But what Ms. Williams just did is the important thing we all need to remember. When in doubt, <clears throat> raise your hand and say, is this a conflict? That way, no one can ever point a finger and say, well, what about? We can always say, it was brought to our attention. We've told them no conflict there. But I do appreciate the fact you did that tonight. Any other questions on this? Okay. While I'm with you, let me mention uh, a couple of things that uh, I know that we've had presentations to you before on landscaping and on things, but uh, I have to tell you again, uh, we really appreciate your participation this past Tuesday night. Many of you are able to come to the joint session. I know several of you had conflicts. Uh, we would encourage those who did have conflicts to watch G10. Glenn can tell you when it's going to be uh, replayed. And even if you were there, I would encourage you to watch it again. That session of what I'm going to call cross-information sharing or almost cross-pollination, you know, we tell you all a lot about what's going on with landscaping projects. But you really don't have a chance to learn about why we're putting a water and sewer line someplace or why roads are going to be built in such a place. That was a great session. And I know it was a long session, but I really personally appreciate, and I know the mayor and council appreciate the fact that you were able to come or that those of you who weren't are interested enough to view it. And those who were not able to be there, we do have cards that we're still hoping you will give us ideas. And any of you, when you view it, or even if you attended, feel free to call me or Glenn or any of the staff to discuss the things that you heard in there. But again, I want to personally thank you for taking time to come to that session the other night. From the manager's office, are there any things going on in the community that you'd like to ask us about that we can uh, give you an update on? I think it's a good opportunity. As you said, uh, once we watch it and evaluate it, I'm quite sure we will come up with some more questions um, for you. I look forward to coming back and being with you. Uh, if I don't see you before uh, Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you for all you do. I understand that one of the things you're going to be talking about tonight is uh, who's decorated their yard, and, or is that coming up in January? No, uh, we're doing tonight to <coughs> talk about Halloween. Oh, to talk about Halloween? Okay. <coughs> well, thank you again for all you do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Johnny Stiltner with the Streets and Clean and Green. Good 
and thank you for inviting me and folks thank you for having me here this evening uh, it's always a pleasure to meet people who are willing to give their time to the city do city functions so thank you very much for me cleaning green for streets is uh, very important right now we have a I don't know two or three programs the one I'll speak about later on is uh, adopt a street and I think you remember Pat Donovan, who came in October, uh, talked to you about Adopt a Stream. Mm -hmm. and we both kind of got on board at the same time with that and, and pushed it forward. And that's one of my slides, so I won't go too far in advance. <laughs> but uh, our uh, mission is primarily to take care of the 155 miles of, uh, of pavement in the city. And we do that, I think, rather well. Uh, over the last few years, we did a little survey not too long ago because we had a practice that the engineering uh, division was doing, and we would go out and dig up the street pretty deep, about 12 inches deep, and we've stopped doing that because we were mixing the soils and things with concrete, and we were trying to figure out what, why is our streets cracking just after we paved them, and that was a long battle. And I think we've done away with that one. We won't see so many cracks anymore because we're not digging down so far because it's really not necessary. And what we're doing now is some portions we may find we may have to dig down a bit, but that has stopped, and I think we'll see a better street in the future. And we've done about, uh, since 2012, we've done four or five miles just with street maintenance, and that's not the contractor stuff. That's some stuff that we're doing. So we're moving ahead and putting in overlays on our own, but the engineering division, they get about 15 to 20 streets at a time with the contractor, and we're really doing well. We're making the money stretch. We have about 100 miles of ditches we maintain, and then a mosquito control. Those are our three primary efforts that we do with about 38 folks. So not to dwell on just our built up and our mission, but in those, we have uh, hundreds of tasks, and you can imagine what some of them might be, but this one in particular is where we like our residents to call us when they see a pothole. The guys are working on one here now, and uh, they, uh, they can get extensive, but they can be just small things that develop into much, much larger. And uh, sometimes you might find one, and it, it might belong to the state. We don't have a problem calling the state. Call us and we'll take care of it, whether it's ours or whether it belongs to DOT, and we'll get DOT action on it. There are a good bunch of guys over there, and we worked well together. The uh, street repair, though, if you, please call us if you see a pothole, and I know you don't like hitting them. Uh, not too often do you find any so dangerous because those probably are not potholes. They're probably what we call cave-ins, where a drainage pipe or a sewer line has erupted some way and has caused a depression in the street. So mind the, the potholes and call us and we will come out and we will react and we will give you thanks for helping take care of our, our streets. Ditch maintenance, as I mentioned, 100 miles of them, and that's almost a, a guess because it could be 150 for all I know at this point, but <laughs> it seems to grow because you, we used to annex a lot of divisions, uh, subdivisions, when the new building growth was going on, and we're not doing too much of that lately because it's, it's not happening. The economy is not helping us a great deal, but that's all right. What we have, we have our hands full. Um, we have about uh, four crews in our uh, division that maintain the ditches, and that is all those behind your houses and in front of your houses and all over the place. But Two of those crews, by the way, are comprised of the inmate workers. We drive to a town up the road a bit, a bit, Carteret Correctional Facility. We go up there Monday through Friday, and sometimes some special trips for Saturday to work on a Saturday if we have a need. And we do that from time to time. But we pick those guys up, about eight of them. If things go right, we get our eight. If not, we'll do with whatever we get, but we've been doing that for over 20 years now, and it has worked out very good for the city, and those crews work real hard in the ditches. We have two other drainage crews that do pipe maintenance. Currently, we have probably, or just had, about 14 different 
holes. October was a terrible month for us in that sense. It was good that we had work. We had plenty of work, and the, <coughs> the rain that we got created us lots more work. It showed some uh, exposed areas of the pipes and any separations that happened. It sucked all the dirt down from the top to the bottom, and that's what it does, and then it leaves us a hole. It's not a pothole. It was a cave-in that we call it, and uh, not too often those cars drive in these. They just expose themselves, and we get on them quick enough to take care of them. We had several in, in backyards that happened like that, so the two drainage repair crews uh, that uh, deal with all those pipes and we have been ordering a lot of pipe lately to take care of that. So we have enough, and uh, we'll finish those jobs as we move forward. Uh, storm drain maintenance also includes a, a cleanup. This cleanup is, as you can see, that's probably in October, November, December on that street for sure, whenever that picture was taken, because you can look at our streets right now, and you see tons of leaves. I can't track them even though... The uh, city manager, when he came on board, gave us a big shot in the arm by buying us two more sweepers. We doubled our amount of uh, street material we pick up in a year's time, and I'm talking thousands of tons. These, uh, these sweepers do a tremendous job, but I can barely keep four sweepers going because of the manpower. We had a lot of um, reductions because of retirements this year and uh, medical issues, but uh, we're bouncing back. We only have a couple vacancies left to fill. So this cleanup uh, is so heavy in October, November, December that uh, we can use a lot of overtime on it, but we're maintaining. And if you see a leaf in your streets, hang on, we'll get there. We've got the capability now of sweeping our streets, completely going through the city in one month. And sometimes we can do it a little better if it's not rained too many times. So the cleanup is very good and we dispose of the material properly and everything that uh, you see on the street. If you've got a bad one and somebody may have missed something, give us a call. We can tell you exactly the last time we were at that location. We have our, we have a little unit that we can put on the sweepers that can tell me, I can pull them up on a computer, mm -hmm. where that sweeper is any time of the day, any place, anywhere and it'll tell me the last time it was there. So if you call me and say, and residents do from time to time because they might have missed seeing the sweeper go by, <laughs> you haven't been out here in six months, and I can clear that up very quickly, but we'll go back out. <laughs> we'll check it out because if leaves fall today I sweep, in three, four days, you can't yeah. tell I've been there. Yeah. So I hope the, our citizens that are listening, I hope they kind of bear with us at this time of the year. But we'll move on and, and kind of keep our, keep it active. <coughs> the um, drainage network itself, though, and, and street sweeping is a very big part of it. You would be surprised at that amount of material that we collect with those sweepers. And uh, it is that much that does not go into our drainage network. It's that much that does not fill in the ditches that we have to clean on an annual basis. But we've broken the city down into nine different sections. The one area that I want to speak about is the older neighborhoods. You have Northwoods, which is one of our oldest neighborhoods, not the oldest, but you have there. And if you think about how large it is, um, when they probably built the place, a 15-inch pipe was about the standard. And today, if you try utilizing 15-inch pipes, they will not hold the amount of water that comes at them. If you don't get at least a 24-inch pipe in the ground for your areas and the subdivisions, now I'm saying that generically speaking, but the people that do the sizing of pipes and checking out the hydrology of or an entire area, that's our engineers that do that, and they decide on what type goes in. The rules changed over the last 40 years or even 20 years, and it probably will continue to change. But for now, our older neighborhoods probably get a little more back up in water from time to time and think about a four million dollar project that went on in Parkwood and Northwoods. The Parkwood area over there we put a lot of money in there and there's no flooding going on. The pipes are doing the job that they were put in the ground to do. The uh, city growth though is uh, limited at this time but uh, what we're seeing is a normal rainfall event. The 
drainage network handles it well. But if you get a, a two inch rain in an hour, uh, everybody will get backed up and we'll get calls, but we have to allow it to slow down. And usually 30 minutes to less than an hour, it's gone. It's, it's gone on down and you've seen it personally probably. So we got to watch these stormwater rules. They, they change, but it's for the good of the environment. No doubt about it. The uh, things that have been done is really tremendous. And I hope that we'll continue watching our environment like that. I believe I went through this rather quickly, but uh, there's another area. And if you can imagine some of our old homes in the area that our residents and our owners have agreed to allow the city or join the program that allows the city to demolish an unlivable resident. We've, we're on our number 58 over the last three years now, 58 houses. We just did one on Johnson Boulevard last week and uh, <coughs> we we're still cleaning that one up, but it's gone now and we've got one or two and I think there might be a couple on Sherwood Road pending here in the near future, but uh, we're going to keep moving at this. And uh, as people ask us if they qualify for the grant that's uh, under our community development program, the grants that they can get in there if their home meets all the standards, that it's not livable and it should be uh, demolished, if that's what they want. Does the demolition program include commercial or just residential? Well, that's a good question. I, okay. I'm pretty sure it's residential, but I have taken down a couple units that uh, that met that. But I, I really can't answer that question right now. I don't believe. I don't know. Uh, we, th there is a program that um, is not an organized activity that would assist some commercial deal, particularly under community development, where it's done is for the elimination of slum and blight. Mm -hmm. So. He, he doesn't get involved in the end, the front end for the money part. He t uh, he's, the, he's the real money action is that he takes it down. I'm the doer, but community development, Ms. Lilly, uh, she is uh, very good at that, and she will evaluate your application. You do have to apply <coughs> for that grant, so if it meets those requirements, then uh, they'll schedule for me to, to demo. Okay. Thank you. So uh, they all probably continue. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when in the beginning, the adopt a street, we have 10 families and groups. Groups means the Boy Scouts or a club of some kind uh, doing various streets in the city right now. And uh, we welcome anybody that would be considered of taking on a street and cleaning it monthly and uh, doing that uh, program. Uh, we provide you some materials such as uh, orange bags and gloves to help you with the cleanup. But uh, it's a worthwhile program. Uh, I can't uh, say anything negative about it. It's cleaning up our streets. It really, in some locations, need it. And uh, I can see a significant difference, such as Liberty Drive down there, just off of 24. Uh, that one needs it from time to time. But so does Corbin. So does a lot more. I could mention many, not just picking on one street. I wouldn't do that. I have 155 miles of them, so I know where most all of them are to, to clean up better. So if you know <coughs> some folks that might be interested, give them our phone number. And uh, those that might be listening to G10, we welcome your requests, and we will check it out for you and get you, a, get you on our program. And... As I mentioned in the beginning, the street sweepers, it was so great to get two additional sweepers that uh, I can't tell you what kind of difference it has made. I've seen it in my 18 years here, and we used to have two always, and it, like, if one was down, one street sweeper for the city was not sufficient to do very much. So now if we have one down, I still have three that we can get out there. So the volume of doing this and the real support that Mr. Woodard has given us is remarkable. I, I applaud the him for doing it and spending the money because those are not cheap. You know, a couple hundred thousand dollars roughly to get a, a good sweeper. Thank you for allowing me the time to be here. I will entertain any questions you may or may not have about the 
part. Um, we do every Friday, though, we take our inmates and get them out of the ditches, and we go up and down our roads cleaning. Uh, I myself, though, take care of Highway 17 bridge around the corner here. I probably stop there twice a week after I find a safe place to pull over and get a little bit of debris, but that's something I want to do. But the idea right now is our inmates will go out and pinpoint certain streets every week. And that's at least one good day with eight people, it's two crews cleaning up the streets in addition to the 10 families and groups that we have helping our certain other streets. So with that in mind, uh, questions? Yes, ma'am? I have a question. If you have a yard that is the elevation is low and the ditch is high, so the water backs sort of meet in the middle, how would you take care of that problem? Well, number one, if it's your yard, it's your responsibility. Okay. So it's a private property matter, but my residents <clears throat> don't need to hear that right off. I go out and I really want to go out and evaluate it, see if the water coming at them can be slowed down, number one. Number two, if I need to excavate the ditch a little bit to try to keep it from jumping out of its banks too quickly. Mm -hmm. I will do those two or three things, and then we will talk with a resident and say, I'm sorry, your yard is too low. You may have to raise the backyard or the yard area, wherever it is, with some soil and redo your sod. So the only thing is there's opportunities for you to fix your own property. There's opportunities for the city to evaluate it and see if we need to do some work there too. So I would have to come out and look at it. I can give you just a broad shot, and that, that's my broad shot is both of us may need to look at it. And I've done that many, many times. I will offer you advice, and we will fix whatever we need to fix. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Good question. I have yes, ma'am. The ditches behind your home, how much cleanup do you do in those ditches? Because they seem to stay full all the time. Well, there's a difference in cleanup and there's a difference in what we do and supposed to do on an annual basis. We consider walking through every ditch on an annual basis, unclogging any blockage that there is. Now, let's go to the cleanup side. What's your impression of a cleanup? Do you mean... Well, no, not the debris or anything, but the ditch itself seems to have been overgrown with weeds in the ditch itself. If it's that case, um, we try to cut them every year. The center line of the ditch, not the shoulders and the banks where that's a private property matter. The council has directed me to make sure that the water is flowing. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem and it's not being seen in a while or looked at, you need to call us, please. Okay. I will help you if you give me a phone call. But I'm not trying to pass this buck. That's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I will come out personally and evaluate it. But I have supervisors that take care of that. Mm -hmm. But if you call, I will come out okay. and I will assess it. But you will find some ditches that are not perfect right now. Yes, you will. Uh, we have so many, and here's a fine example, is our newest neighborhoods, Carolina Forest, Williamsburg Parkway, and even the Commons. They have a certain drainage structure that flows off the road and under the sidewalk, instead of in a pipe or in an open ditch to a point, it goes under the sidewalk and then into a swell. Well, the swells are not maintained by the homeowners they let the weeds grow up this high. I try to get to them, and what they've created me is a nightmare, but that's okay. I'll take care of it when I can get to it. But to cut that grass, or it's weeds and small trees, it's not grass at all. And that's, they've left it alone and it's become whatever they wanted because the code allows them to do that. You can leave it grow and, and don't really do anything, but then I have to come out and cut a line in the center of it somehow, but all I want to do is cut it all because it's about 10 foot across. But I cut it all so the water will go so I can get access to clean a center line on it. But if the residents would trim it, their property lines where they meet, do your share and do your share, it would, oh, would it ever help me out a great deal with the city maintaining the ditches. Uh, but still, if you have a question, any resident, anywhere, call. Because you may have a ditch back there and you think it's city should be doing something. <clears throat> it may not be a city-maintained ditch. One rule of ditches. If a city street that 
has a drainage area with storm drain boxes and side roadside ditches. And if that street drains in it, the city owns it. They may now they owns it. Don't don't. I better find a better word. <laughs> <laughs> city owns no easements and none of that stuff. But we will take responsibility <coughs> to maintain the water flow if a street drains it. That's the key. If a street doesn't drain through your ditch, it's your responsibility. That's another key. So a lot of folks are kind of let down a little bit when they find out that, hey, I'm sorry, we don't maintain that area. And there are some like that. To more than I would like, but that's the way it is. It's, it's set up that way when they built the subdivisions many years ago or just a few years ago. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was wondering, I have heard tell of um, cities that they have a schedule of when their street sweepers will come by and they will allow you to rake your leaves into the curb from your yard during the fall season. And I was just wondering if there was ever any forecast of that happening. I have heard that before and I've tried to do one or two things, make a schedule. But if it rains, my schedule is out the window. Well, she's yeah. talking specifically about disposing I'm, of yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, getting, okay. I'm right. getting to that one. She said to schedule first, <laughs> okay. but no, no schedule for you to rake your leaves in the area. Mm -hmm. There's too many negative impacts that might come at me to make sure I'm at your house at 10 o'clock in the morning taking care of the leaves you've just raked into the gutter area. I can't do that. I can't get there. There's no way. Certain towns have what they call the leaf program. Okay. You can put loose leaves at the edge of your property mm -hmm. and they'll come by with a vacuum and they'll suck them all up. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. We don't have a leaf program. We will try to get whatever's in the curb and gutter and in the road and that's about all that we are manageable. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I got two sweepers rather than getting a leaf truck. My sweepers will pick up more constantly, daily, every day, rather than the three months in the fall where you take a vacuum out and suck up leaves. I can do all year long sweeping, which just makes our streets much cleaner. It keeps the stuff out of the drain. So no, we don't have a leaf program. But like you're not that. against, like if I see the sweeper coming down my street oh. and my kids rake the leaves. In yeah, the wave road. at him and he'll stop for you. <laughs> okay. Make sure you heard what she said. <laughs> she <laughs> says if you're Sweeper coming, yard. she's going to rake the leaves out in front of your sweeper. <laughs> he'll probably <laughs> say, <laughs> you don't not do that, but uh, we probably shouldn't do that in <laughs> reality because... Uh, that's a stormwater issue. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the conversation. We're going to get Pat to come talk to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's going to come back for remedial um, conversations okay. with you. Yeah. Good questions, though, but really, it's it's really far beyond what we're, okay. that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. And where do the leaves all go when you suck them up off the street? Um, either at the county landfill or eastern excavation, which is a little cheaper. And I'd rather use a cheaper place. So does anything happen to them? Are they composted? or They are by the owners of the property we dump on, whether the county. The county has a little different uh, leaf and vegetation site where they put everything and then they mulch it. Or, and I don't really know what to do after that unless they sell it to corporations or companies that may buy it and bag it up or something like that. But the Eastern We're Escobar take it makes... Sarah's house. <laughs> 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 only if it's bagged. We give you... yeah. yeah, only if it's bagged. <laughs> Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the cost to our city to get the inmates, or exactly how does oh, that work? Oh, that's so expensive. <sighs> we spend two thousand and two hundred and thirty-four dollars a year for eight men, five days a week, to work for us. Okay. They get paid a dollar an hour, a dollar a day. Excuse me, a dollar a day is what the inmates get. That's what we pay, okay. and it goes into the, their account out at the, the correctional facility. So. 2000 some odd dollars, that equates, and I've done this more than once, but as the salaries may go up, that equates to over $100,000 in savings, salary savings a year, $100,000. And that's a maintenance worker one scale, the lowest scale I have at $11 an hour. So really, when you talk about the savings, I mean, you could subtract out a couple of things, such as a van that we use to pick them up with and one or two laborers, but uh, overall, it's a substantial savings. They've ridden in the prison van before. They have? Mm -hmm. We had to bar it. Oh, I hope it wasn't dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys work hard and their boots are muddy, but uh, we keep them clean as we can. So, did that answer your question? Yes. Dollar a day. You were talking about find the, per the, per the company that bought the leaves at Eastern Excavating? Yes, ma'am. 
Terry, we they don't buy them. No, we no, no, we pay a fee. We pay a fee to dump it. Terry, you know Terry. Terry Williams, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I think that's wonderful that he that y'all are doing that. Yeah, and he takes concrete. He takes uh, he takes a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and the, the vegetation that the city sanitation trucks pick up, the limbs, of debris, they dump over there. That's good. Mm -hmm. There was a suggestion about 10 years ago made by uh, one of the division staff. And uh, they were taking them to the county landfill paying by the weight. This you pay by the truck, $75 for a truck or $50 for one single axle, $40 a single axle, $50 double axle. So you don't pay by the weight. And when they're wet, they're heavy. All of it is. Thank you for the good questions. Any more? It's a good group. Well, Please invite you. me back yes, sometime. Yes. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay, next uh, we have Sergeant Dell Silas <coughs> with Police and Environmental Issues. I was going to thank Dr. Woodruff for letting us keep our donuts. <laughs> 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 All right, as he said, my name is Dale Silence. Of course, I work for Jackson Police Department, as you can probably tell by my uh, outfit I wore tonight. Uh, I am in charge of the uh, Community Services Division, uh, which oversees our uh, school resource officers as well as uh, the community officers. <coughs> community policing, that is a, a strategy that focuses on building relationships and partnerships with our community. Um, that We are the, the long-term, longer-term um, attempt at reducing crime, um, reducing that, that criminal atmosphere in any way, shape, or form. Any way we can do that, we want to go that route. You know, when you're, when you're working the shift that night and you make an arrest or you, you go to these calls or you go to these certain, you know, breaking into a residence, you can come up with a, a temporary fix. That, that's kind of what you do out the gate anyways. You make a temporary fix. You solve that problem at that moment. And that's really the best you can do at that moment because you, you get done, clean up, you document, you do what you got to do, and you're on to the next call. So everything can be somewhat temporary there. Our goal is to kind of look at a long-term uh, effect on, on the crime and, and, and how to fix people and communities and neighborhoods. <coughs> Every Jacksonville police officer practices community policing. This is very true. Um, I can't tell you the number of times you know, we got to a call, whether it be a domestic situation, uh, whether it be um, you know an argument or a fight or something as simple as, as a larceny, whatever it may be, you get to these, these houses, these residents or businesses, and while talking to them, you realize there's no sheetrock on the walls or there's no power or they've got a six-foot-high pile of wood and whatever it may be in their side yard. These kind of things, these officers see these things, and, and it kind of sticks out. So the officer naturally cannot uh, cannot do anything about that at that moment at two o'clock in the morning because they're there because someone got in an argument. That's not the time and place to address that situation. So naturally they'll contact community services, and we can get with, of course, other divisions, departments, and other um, groups, and we can work to, to help take care of that. <coughs> and of course that's through the patrol uh, division, the field operations, which our division actually falls under field operation. Uh, investigations and community uh, policing division. Now, community policing, again, uh, comes back to community services. The, the, some of our community officers there. Um, it, it's a, it's a, we do, we do a lot. We're, there's a lot under under our roof. Um, as you can see, McGruff, um, the National Night Out, the, the Eagle. Um, there's the, the Crime Stoppers, the Dare, the Great Officer which is, of course, gang resistance education and training. Um, of course, the community officers, all these individuals are all under community services. It's outside of your normal call answering or um, vehicle stops on a you know, bypass or whatever it may be. It's outside of your normal policing duties or outside of what, what other officers are assigned to do. Community policing, we, we divide up. We have four officers assigned to this particular this job. Uh, it's broken up in sectors, as you can see. Uh, instead of zones, is how patrol does it. Um, these officers, again, these officers work whatever schedule they need to need to during the day, in the evenings, uh, to get a job done. They they really do so much. Um, again, some of the houses that you know, I think the streets had a, a picture earlier. 
and, and we work hand in hand with, with streets to get rid of some of the houses. I know, uh, I, I believe we're familiar with uh, Fairwinds Apartments. That was uh, that was a, that was a big, that was a big kind of a deal, uh, and that went on for a while. And it was uh, it was kind of a little bit drawn out, but but we really uh, everybody worked together so well to accomplish the goal that it ended up really well. Um, <clears throat> Of course, our division, we address concerns forwarded to uh, the patrol division, the city departments and divisions, citizens and others. Uh, the biggest thing is, is, is for us, is, it's got to be a teamwork concept, both the citizens and community and us. Uh, without someone calling us, let us know, hey, just so you know, uh, people across the street from us, I don't think anybody lives there, but there's folks living in the house. There's no power, there's no water, um, there's no windows, but there, I think there's a family still living in the house. That's something that... Wow, we need to look into that. Let's, let's go see that, you know, immediately. And we can start looking into it. And of course, we can get with folks. And we work with church organizations, different groups of people that, that help provide housing, help provide clothing, uh, food. I know right now, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we do a lot of, you know, people call, food line calls. Hey, look, I've got 50 dinners, Thanksgiving dinners. I don't have anybody to give them to. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can take care of that. And we go get with these groups. Hey, we've got 50 dinners. Can we come up with some families that, that need dinners that don't have Thanksgiving dinners? And so we go, we take our truck, we go pick up these dinners, and we go take them to the families that need these dinners. And that's one of the many things. It's bicycles, the same thing. We have people always donating bicycles. I don't feel like we're throwing them out because it's a perfectly good bicycle. So we actually have officers that will bring them in. They go down to the shop. They repair. They, they fix these bicycles and give them to kids that don't have bicycles. So instead of throwing away a perfectly good bicycle, uh, we try to give them to, to kids that, that could really use a bicycle. <clears throat> stakeholders, again, everyone is a stakeholder. You know, residents, business owners, property managers, um, all these folks we rely on to give us information, give us calls. Um, and we, we would ask that obviously not dial 911 because somebody has a pile of trash in their yard. <laughs> That's not necessarily what 911 is used for. But in a moment, we'll get to it. Um, my phone number and you can certainly call and report these things and we'll certainly start getting that ball rolling with different the groups that we work with reduces crime the um, one of the goals of constantly being out in the areas and as you guys know the police department it, it doesn't stop it's a, it's a machine that's always going 12 hours at a time these shifts and all they do is drive you know um, someone mentioned potholes earlier we find a lot of potholes <laughs> I will tell you we do find a lot of potholes um, I, I've personally found, and I think he called them a, a cave-in, cave-ins. We found those, and literally you could watch the asphalt just start to kind of sink, and it was fairly large. Uh, and, of course, we find a lot of those, and, of course, we right away, hey, we've got, and start marking it off, putting cars around it, putting cones around it, and start marking these things off. And, it, and that's, a, that's a machine that constantly, we're always out looking for things that, that, that need attention, that could you know, make things obviously better. These things that, that don't get the attention they need, uh, they can. Um, has everyone heard of the broken window theory? And it actually has a different name, but, it, but it's, a, um, it's a theory where you have a window in this older house and it has a busted window. So back at, you know, these kids or, or maybe teenagers or maybe even adults, who knows, may, may get this idea. We know, well, the window's busted. Well, apparently nobody really cares about the house, and that's a good window. i just put something through that window. And it's kind of a concept to where ultimately the neighborhood starts suffering because of a broken window. So naturally, we, we want to be aware of a resident that has, um, that has you know, a window missing. Or, or and Obviously, if you have a cracked window, don't start calling the police because my neighbor's got a crack in the window. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it needs to be somewhat noticeable and um, it has to have some effect to it that makes sense. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's what we do. That's why we're here. <clears throat> By taking care of those things, of course, you increase the pride in your community, um, whether you're just passing through and you notice, man, this place is really, it's really clean. I can tell you, I'm a big fan of, of, of nice lawns and, 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 and I enjoy cutting grass. I, that's one of my woo saw moments. <laughs> and I can tell you, I, I go down and I spoke to city manager prior uh, about how nice Western Extension looks when the grass is cut. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't tell you the number of places, you know, you go and the grass is four feet high and it's just how in the world do you drive down this road every day? And it's almost like you got to just drive like this if you're not looking at it. But, but Western Extension, especially, that's the one that really stands out to me, but it looks so nice when it's cut. 
It just looks clean, and it's just, it is nice to drive down. It's encouraging. <clears throat> so all these things, obviously, and I'm sure you guys know, when they're, when they're kept up and they're, and, and they're clean and you take pride in that stuff, naturally, that's going to reduce your criminal activity. Nobody wants to go in the middle of a nice, clean area and just start fighting for no reason. That's just <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose there. Again, it reduces crime. Uh, vacant, unoccupied, uh, and dilapidated structures invite criminal activity, uh, health and safety hazards, uh, sinking property values, and code violations. <clears throat> and, of, of course, it invites criminal activity. I can't tell you. That I've recently been assigned to the division where I'm at now. Um, prior to that, I was a supervisor on, on patrol. And prior to that, I was a detective with the Special Operations Division. I can't tell you the number of times, over and over and over again, these individuals had warrants. They didn't have anywhere to go. They couldn't go home because people would call on them. They couldn't go to friends' house because people would call them. So they would find these, these, these empty homes, and they would just start living there as long as they could until someone called or the police just happened to come across them and make contact with them. That happened more times than I like to, to say. And I'm not saying all vacant homes have people with warrants living in them. That, that's not the point of that. Just that they should be, of course, monitored and just keep an eye on those areas. And they are health and safety hazards. But naturally, when you have a vacant home like that, you know, if you don't have windows, start getting creatures living in and out in, in those areas. Um, and not even to discuss mold, um, all that stuff that comes with that. Sinking property values, I think we all understand what that is naturally you probably have that one house that you have to pass to get to your house it's like gosh why don't they just sell some of those cars you know why don't they just paint a house why don't just just cut your grass just once just cut your grass <laughs> um so naturally those, those things there and uh and of course code violation we work again hand in hand with with code enforcement to to if we got something that you know maybe it's one thing to to just refuse to cut your grass it's another thing that you can't cut your grass there's two different things. If you can't cut your grass, we want to help. That, that's, that's why we're here. We want to provide, we'll, we'll connect, you know, some type of help to, to get that taken care of. Now, if you just won't cut your grass, then that's another issue we can, again, go to in code enforcement. We, we can start going that route. <clears throat> so naturally, we don't take every situation is not the same. It's case-by-case -case basis. Working together, we couldn't do our job if we didn't work together. I mean, there, there's no other way to complete the job that I have without working with the citizens and the community. There's just, there's no way. I, I literally would not have a job. So without folks calling us about, hey, look, there's a guy, um, he's always under the same tree, day in, day out. I, I don't think he has a home. You know, he's, he's a little bit, you know, he doesn't talk much and call us. I, I, if, it's, if it's not an emergency, obviously don't dial 911, but call either the admin line or call me and my, my number will be up here in a minute. Uh, we, we, we handle that kind of stuff. Someone that doesn't have a place to go necessarily, doesn't have someone to, to, to communicate with or help them out. Again, we, we have things we can do to help the individual out. <clears throat> Combined citizen service model. It's the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Of course, we work uh, together with you guys. The Jacksonville Police Department Code Enforcement the Community Development uh, Office of Livable Neighborhoods, and, uh, of course, Streets, as we spoke a while ago. Again, this is absolutely a team effort. It, 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 again, it has to be. Uh, and, and that is why we can have the effect that we've had so far um, in Jacksonville. And, again, I'll bring up um, the Fairwinds Apartments. This, this included Jacksonville Police Department, the City Attorney, Code Enforcement, Community Development, and Streets. <coughs> I can tell you this place here, I've worked in this area um, on many, in many different ways. I've worked in this little, I guess, neighborhood here. Um, these places were, um, they were not very, they didn't produce a lot of um, positive things. Um, so, it, again, it was taken care of, and I can tell you it's much cleaner in that area now. It's nice. Um, it is, in, in fact, it's, uh, it's clean and green, so it's, uh, it's nice in there. <clears throat> Littering, I, I can tell you, uh, I know I, I mentioned earlier I transferred from the patrol division here, uh, and we have a, a midship. Sometimes we can focus on some of our, our um, different things that we have going on, whether it be a governor's highway safety program that we have that, that we're trying to focus on for seat belts, or maybe it's speeding in certain areas that we're getting a lot of complaints on, or maybe we have an increased number of wrecks in this area. There are certain things that sometimes on your MIF shift you can donate an hour or two with all your guys and go work on these areas. 
<clears throat> I can tell you I personally have stood on these street corners in plain clothes and caught all these folks that are throwing cigarette butts out the window or cigarette papers or straw papers. And I'm just thinking that almost hit you. I mean, just they just really there's no interest in, in, in you know, finding a trash can or at least putting it in a cup or something until you can find a trash can. So naturally, as you can tell, I did not get a complete number for this year. But and again, there's two different types of littering. One is littering is less than 15 pounds is, is littering. If it's greater than 15 and actually over 50 is, is a, a different level, different class uh, is actually dumping at that point. <clears throat> Citations for littering in 2014 was 41, and that's up from seven in 2013. Mm -hmm. So you can see that's that's a it's a pretty good increase in in charges for littering. So naturally, we're taking that step to uh, to help make folks aware that find a trash can. You know, it really it's not that hard. You know, put it in your center console or your cup <laughs> or whatever it may be until you can find a trash can. And those citations are they can be expensive also. Enforcing law um, graffiti. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you well know, graffiti it, it encourages criminal activity in, in and of itself. It encourages gang activity because naturally, if you see, if you're with, I don't know, if you're with one group of individuals, and you see guys putting up all their signs, and they're with a different group of individuals, naturally, no, this is our this is our area. Of so course, you want to put your marks up there. You want to put your your signs up. Well, that just encourages more and more markings and more graffiti and more. Uh, you know, deface some property. So we, these are community officers also. We take it upon ourselves to go out and clean these areas up. <clears throat> so again, if you see this, again, I'd ask you not call 911, but please call us and let us know when you see this. We want to be on top of this kind of stuff especially. Of course, there's our website there for Jackson Police Department and the, uh, of course, the city. Of course, our mission statement, we the member of the Jacksonville Police Department through teamwork with our citizens, which is incredibly important, again, are committed to providing a safe community. Anybody have any questions? Your phone number. My phone? Yeah, it was up there in the original slide. <laughs> My number is, uh, I'm sorry, forgive me. I just got transferred there. I'm almost positive it's 938. I want to say it's 6406. Just down 4,000. 4, yes, 4,000 4, and ask for Sergeant Silence That's if you would. Down That's, the administrative line. That's Are fine. you from Onslow County? Originally? Yes, yes ma'am. Are you good with Silence's boy? No, ma'am. They're a distant cousin, but. <laughs> Are they? Yes, ma'am. That's a fine family. Did you, yes, ma'am. Did you take over Sergeant Peters? Yes, ma'am. 6406. 6406. Is that what I said originally? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm glad I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can just call City Hall and Carlo will put you through. That, that's true, too. <laughs> no one has any questions? No questions? Okay. Suppose you had a, like last night, my husband got called, he called the police <clears throat> because the dog was barking in the backyard at one thirty at night. Would y'all have gone out there for that? Bar we do all the time. Oh, yes, ma'am. We absolutely do. Yeah. Now, yeah, it, may not it, be, it may not be the community officers, but we will certainly send officers out. Absolutely. Yes, I thought I was going to be on TV. <laughs> 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 in reference to the uh, graffiti. Yes, ma'am. In some cities, they, um, if they catch the young kids <coughs> doing graffiti, they have them to come out and clean it. Well, normally that is court ordered. Ah. So, uh, and that, again, that, that's completely up to the court. At that moment, it depends on their age. It, mm -hmm. A lot of things come into factor on when they start doing that stuff. Uh, it, it can be a misdemeanor. Um, if there's a lot of damage done, if there's significant damage done, it could be a felony. It really depends. It depends on a lot of different things. But that that would be a great idea. I mean, if we could get that worked out, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Jacksonville had a lot of that at one time, but it's not as bad as it was painting. at one time at all. Here. Well, I can tell you, we also do a lot of painting. <laughs> no, really? Yes, ma'am. We, we, so we it's as bad, but well, y'all covered up. I, I, I don't know that it's... <clears throat> I don't know that it's, it's as bad. I know a few years ago it was... It was more noticeable, but I can tell you it's not as bad now as it has been. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad to know that because it was bad at one time. Do we have a high rate of gangs in Jacksonville? Well, it, <clears throat> I would say no. Okay. Uh, nowhere near. Uh, you, you have folks around that, that show signs and show kind of have emblems and symbols, and, and so... 
you, you can't say no because then they have something to prove. You, and you can't say yes because then you have a gang problem. Does that make sense? So there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's groups of folks out there that naturally are in the, in the business of, of, of crime. Those folks are there, and they're, and they're everywhere. Now, what they call themselves or what they you know, par are particular in is who knows at this given moment in what group you're talking about. But, um, but there's not a significant, as in some areas around us, to have. Well, thank you very much. You are very welcome. Thank you. All your information. <coughs> that was very interesting there. Yes. I did not know all that. Next, we have our committee matters. Um, Patrick, Carol, recognition committee. Glenn's job here. Okay, we are currently in the holiday decoration award contest. We have several entries for the month of October. Here is one of the entries for the fall. This is the entry for Halloween. The decision for the winner is this entry. It is Mr. Roberto Rocasino and the family of 101 Del Dolores Court. And they will they have been invited to attend a city council meeting on Tuesday evening to receive their award. This is the second uh, award this family has won for decorating. As in last year, the contest for the holiday <coughs> holiday contest is still uh, on, and entries are can be made by calling City Hall or going on the city website. Okay. okay. Uh, planning <laughs> subcommittee, Linda. Um, we are the city is going to work with neighborhoods, and the, the project is livable neighborhoods, and they're trying to have a project that will build and develop and uh, the older neighborhoods. Uh, they're going to be meeting with citizens in each neighborhood. They've met with one last month. They'll be meeting with another uh, neighborhood, the, the eighth. And they're talking with the, the citizens of the community members. And what, what they find out from those uh, citizens, they will try to see what they can do to help these older neighborhoods that need help, that they'll do. There are a lot of things were mentioned, like uh, the, uh, I know we had one come out and they did the, where the roads, and you can't see when you're crossing the street. They did all, cut down all the trees in the shrubbery, and now you can see if someone's riding their bikes on the trail. You can see them coming, because some people just keep going. But now at least you can stop. But that's what we're working on, and we're gonna see, and I think it's a good thing because uh, I think some of the old neighborhoods need a lot of help. I think a lot of you're going to find is that they're just not able or can't afford some of the things, that, and they yeah. wish somebody would help them out. Yeah. And I, I think the city, I like the direction, because I think they're really mm -hmm. going to step in and help mm -hmm. out. So that's all I have. Well, thank you. Go ahead. All right. Well, one of the things that um, uh, Dr. Woodruff mentioned was about Tuesday night, if you'll take one and pass it down on here, um, we had a wonderful um, event Tuesday night. For those of you who are there, we certainly do appreciate it. We understand that not everyone um, could make it as it was there. But as said, um, we, we'd love to have your input on things. And the, um, the first one is if you didn't get a chance to fill out a card about other activities you'd like us to, to work on, uh, let us know. Now, it, in fairness, um, we ask that you either watch the program before you fill out this card um, so that you can get an update on what is going on. And then the second card is a, basically the card that we've asked you to fill out about what are things that, um, that, the, um, that the committee can do, um, what would you like to see them work on um, during this time. And I thought, if you would, we, we passed out to you, um, the clerk's office has compiled a very quick summary of um, what, what some of the cards that were turned in um, said. So this is not an exhaustive list, but this is some of them there. And um, admittedly, some people brought up things that had already been discussed, and um, some people brought up some new items, as it was. So this kind of works toward that. I think if you'll notice on the, um, on the bottom half of the second page um, about the items that committees could work on, and of course it may have been one of you that wrote these down that for environmental and appearance 
um, to, to work on a few things and a comment about what the planning board should be working on uh, in this regard as it was. And then there were some general conversations to be uh, a part of that. This is part of you know, the year before last when you were brought in on December 12th and they asked you to provide that list. And of course, it takes time to get things done. So the idea was not to keep um, you know, asking you for things to do because we, we've kind of got a list and we're working that list as it is now. The more important thing is to make sure that there's not something that hasn't been mentioned that needs to be considered. And then two is of the things, what if anything can this committee do to advance some of those items that either were on the list in the past or that can be in support of things that are underway or that would be something that would be new to be done as a part of this action as it was there. We're not necessarily just trying to find something for you to assign yourself to do. We're just merely saying this is an opportunity to speak up about what should be done if you hadn't had an opportunity to do that before. So, Madam Chairman, um, if, the, if the members um, wish to discuss that for a few moments or bring something up, this would be a good time. Otherwise, we'd like you to take the cards with you and return them as soon as possible. You can email in your responses to um, Carla or myself, and we'll get them to the right place. Um, or you can return the card, um, anything that you'd like to do on that regard. Pension center shows up on a lot of them. <laughs> well, toward the end of that, that was the, the mention was made of that. That um, obviously we've now got some hotels that have some additional space um, that was not available before, and a new one that will be coming online. Um, they hope to have it open before the end of the year. That they would also have some additional space. Um, the county has um, built a, a space within the building that Miss Webb works in. Uh, that has some space that they think, you know, can uh, that's accommodating more larger facilities as it is. Uh, we are hopeful that the Sturgeon City Environmental Center will have space that will be nicely finished, that will be available for that. So the point is to kind of use up what you've got and then reassess this situation. And uh, when, we, when we did that on December 12th, we didn't quite have the inventory that was online at that time, and uh, we, we, we see the need of that um, moving. Um, next, we have Suzanne Nelson with the Planning Advisory Board. Okay. Um, over the, well, I guess over really the past two months, we um, maybe longer than that, we really haven't had to meet, but that isn't because stuff hasn't been going on. It's where we had the UDO, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, that was established a couple years ago, um, which kind of relieves the advisory boards because it allows the, the city staff to go ahead and follow through with the decisions that need to take place. But um, a few things that to make note of, I guess, is um, we do have um, a couple of churches that are proposed um, to be constructed. There's one on Maplehurst Road, and there's also another one that's going to be constructed on, you know, where the CBS is at the corner of Gum Branch and Western. Um, that's River of Life's property, so they're going to um, be constructed. And they've put in for their permit and whatnot, and... Um, it's a rather large facility that they'll be um, building. Um, they're at Gateway and Western. I'm sure you know at this point, but um, it's a Verizon store that's going up and also a Starbucks. Um, there's the Moe's at the mall, which that should be Make open at this people. point. Um, we do have um, a retail sports store that has um, put in for their permit. Um, it's going to be a little bit over 65,000 square feet, and it's on the McRae track, which if I'm sure many of you know where Shilsky Chiropractic is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it'll be across on Western, on the other side of Western. Um, I think those are really pretty much the main, I mean, and there have been several um, properties along Piney Green and Richlands Highway wanting to be um, rezoned from either a residential to some sort of um, business commercial. Um, there's also been some talk of some other retail facilities along Western, but um, the ones I've talked about were the kind of the main ones that have kind of taken precedence here lately. So that's it for right now. Oh, thank you. Uh, is there any comments from the board members? I have a question, yes. Suzanne. Yes. Uh, these businesses are there anyone that they're in town. Is this people that are new that's coming into Jacksonville, or they're 
uh, they live here? The churches are ones that are currently here. Um, but as for the retail, that's going to be, that's new coming in. Um, we would like to um, wish a happy birthday to Councilman Washington and to all others who have a birthday since we last met or who will have a birthday um, before our next meeting. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> or maybe a new baby. Yeah. That's very true. That's true. That is true. New citizen. That's true. <laughs> well, our next meeting will be Thursday, February 4th of 2016. And um, before we adjourn, I would like to wish everyone a happy holidays and a happy new year. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas because I'm that kind of woman and rather have Merry Christmas. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> sunshine. Of course, they call it sunshine. <laughs> what about a Happy New Year? <laughs> and a Happy New Year. <laughs> you got to get the kisses first. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. So when's this?